percolate on a particular mix of odd and inspiring news headlines in Wendy's Coffee House. Newsmakers with a penchant for the unknown, unexplained, and unusual share their experiences with UFOs, ghost encounters, near-death experiences, and more for your own unique blend of Wendy's Coffee House Curious. It's that time already. Yeah, coffee. <laughs> Thank you, Starbucks. Okay. Um, and they didn't pay for that, okay. <laughs> That's just me. But uh, what a week. It's been all sorts of good stuff this week. Uh, the first big exciting news was that there was a signal from another planet way, 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 way out there. And not only that, that the signal was coming from a planet from, from beings that were like super, super, super smart. And the name they called them was something like a Kardashian. I, I, I'm like, wait a second. The, for a Kardashian kind of planet. Well, no, the actual, the actual word was that this was the type of civilization that it might be. And Kardashian or something, too. Is, is, I just thought the resemblance was quirky. But then the other thing came about two days later. They burst the bubble and said, no, 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 it's probably not it. And somebody in Russia could have a mis- made a mistake. And there's something that about a satellite that they had that they had not disclosed. <laughs> that, that, that might be where this noise is coming from. Man, that was a buzzkill. So, however, today's news is this proof of alien life. An enormous UFO captured on film in a remote Malaysian village. This one is right now crisscrossing the web. Viral gold. And it does look really cool. It, it's, it's a great, huge monster of a UFO with a giant eye in the center. And it goes over, and you hear these, this mumbling crowd noise, cue crowd noise in the background. And, of course, we don't understand what they're saying. It could be any crowd noise. But they're there, and they're agog, of course, as it goes by. And it makes noise, which most people who've had these encounters say that the really, really significant thing about it was no matter how massive it was, it was the extreme silence. Okay, they didn't do their homework. All right, well, I don't know. The, the other problem with this one is the local authorities said there were no UFO sightings reported. Now, you know that could be that they just didn't want to report them because they knew nobody would take them seriously. But of all the people who might have seen them, there was only one. So, okay, but that's the good one of today. So that's the viral. You can check it out, Daily Express, um, Daily Mail. I can't. Yeah, that's th- those are the highlights. <laughs> okay, and then closer to home, they have found a vast donut-shaped reef right behind the barrier reef that's having all the problems right now with the red coral and the massive die-off, which is the, the huge um, environmental fallout that we're getting. But they're saying now that there's one when they were doing the research in northern Queensland. Um, It's right behind the Great Barrier Reef. They never noticed it, I guess, because the Great Barrier was right front and center. And here, this one required a little bit more sleuthing, maybe nine yards. Oh, look! Surprise! But I think it's really cool. So so they got 6,000 square kilometers, 2,300 square miles. Three times the previous estimated size. Okay. Wow! (laughs) Hard to miss that one. And then again, the ocean. They're, They're pretty sure that we have... Still vast amounts of it that we haven't canvassed and all sorts of new anomalous kinds of uh, life beings are, are being reported weekly. I like the little, the little, the little glowy, glowy octopus that came out a couple weeks ago. It looked um, very, he, he, he looked friendly, like he might talk to us. Um, and then we've got the, the news of the week that anybody who is not a pet owner might find interesting, that dogs actually understand human language published in the journal Science, which then means it is vetted and it's legit, and they've done lots of research that everybody's qualified to do this research, and they like them, and they're going to put their story in the paper (laughs) somewhere. Okay, well, what it meant was that when they studied, they looked at their brains as they were uh, looking at or listening to language. And so what happened is when they studied the brain, they studied the emotional response, and they studied the words that were being said, and there had to be two responses. So when the brain lit up in two places in accordance with this, then they knew, okay, this their understanding. And the only time the dog's brains lit up in both places was when you said, good dog, and you meant it. If you just said, good dog, good dog, good dog. No, uh-uh. A little more requirement here. 
mean it so they can tell if you have integrity, if you're, yeah, you know, I like that because any dog owner knows if you're trying to fake them out with a treat, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll go for a walk and get treats. You are in the doghouse forever if you don't come forth with a treat. <laughs> That's just, yeah, yeah, they, they're, they're not thrilled with that kind of <clears throat> antagonizing and deceptive behavior. The cool thing is, Gene Wilder died, okay? Now, that's not cool. The cool thing is the response. Music everywhere. Look at all, all across the Internet. Song erupted. I think he would have been so thrilled. One of the things about Gene that I thought in hearing the interviews, and, of course, I'm a fan of Charlie the Chocolate Factory, Blazing Saddles, and Young Frankenstein. One of the things that, that he said when... Um, he was approached to do Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. He would only do it if he could do the entry one way. And so, okay, what's what's this? I think Mel Brooks. Um, well, I want to come in. I'm going to walk out feeble and just, you know, old and stooped over. And then when I walk out, then I'm going to do a quick roll, flip, walk forward. And that's how I'm going to introduce him. He said, well, why? He said, because from that moment on, they will never know if he's telling the truth. Whoa, yeah, and that's real. That's that's true. You do. You do, you doubt him. He's the best portrayal of that. It's so fabulous. Anyway, um, the cool thing about that is they're showing Gene Wilder films AMC Theater this weekend, five o'clock. I think on Sunday is the local AMC uh, thirty. I think is where it's at, and five dollars to get in. But Blazing Saddles and Chocolate Factory, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, fifty-five locations. So there might be one near you if that if that isn't on the list. Uh, we're talking ghosts right after lightning. Rob Garcia with Elite Paranormal is going to be on with me this morning. And ghosts right after lightning because lightning was a big highlight this week. In Norway, 300 reindeer and one strike. This is uh, extreme. Okay, we're looking at the stream weather. And I'm bringing this up because PK Man was known to hit people with lightning, and there's probably another one of those guys out here. Another one. This is... 19 cows, and this is in Texas. Okay, that's this week. Now, a little bit earlier was the guy who struck by lightning, and he was in his house, and he was in his kitchen. And in his kitchen, he got hit by a bolt of lightning. All right? They say you can have, it happens in the shower, too. In his kitchen. Anyway, it threw him across the room, 65, and um, he said he was cutting a slice of turkey for his pet cat, Emma. <laughs> and he was hit. It was the biggest bang I've ever heard. It sounded like their room with me, you know, it was in the room right beside me anyway. So he, he, he's okay. And they said the cool thing was what saved him was his slippers. And there's a picture of his slippers on the Internet. I'll put that on wendyscoffeehouse.com so you can see the slippers because now they're going to be in demand by anybody who's a frightening, frightening thought of being hit by lightning while they're doing dishes in the kitchen feeding their cat or dog. All right, so there you go. That's, that's, those are the highlights, and we're going to come back. We're going to talk about ghosts. Local, yes. Yeah, regional. You want to go see some. And Rob Garcia is our source with Elite Paranormal here next on Wendy's Coffee House. Kansas City's Severe Weather Radio Station, KCMO. Do you smell it? Fall is in the air. The aroma of authentic festival fare in Weston. Mark your calendar Tobacco Festival, Apple Fest, Weston Irish Festival. Each has its own unique flavor and fan club. Theme music, traditional foods and drinks make each festival a weekend filled adventure. Everyone has a favorite. Visit westonmo.com or download the new Weston mobile app for more information and a complete calendar of all festival events. See you there. When a nightlight speaks and only you can understand it, do you listen? Or pretend that your imagination is merely playing tricks? Talking to nightlights is a revitalizing spiritual guide that follows a woman's inspirational journey to learn the power that can be harnessed by losing fear and suspending disbelief. Available now on Kindle and paperback at Amazon.com. Stop being drained by energy vampires. A full energy audit from Eric's Energy will expose the pesky problems plaguing your home. Weatherization, insulation, and other energy-saving technologies installed by experienced, reliable technicians will drive a stake through the heart of what's tormenting you. Call 816-537-5100 or visit us at ericsenergy.com. E-R-I-C-S-E-N-E-R-G-Y.com. ericsenergy.com. Garlic optional. 
At New Horizon Ranch, we believe that every child is capable of greatness. Over the last 10 years, unique programs, dedicated volunteers, and horse partners have helped children and adults of all ages improve physical strength, relational, and cognitive skills. Sometimes it's reading to our miniature horses, and sometimes it's riding. But it's always therapeutic and educational. Learn more about what we do and how you can get involved at NewHorizonRanch.org. Give a gift that helps feed a city. The Giving Grove helps communities grow, harvest, and share healthy food by planting fruit trees, nuts, and berries at local Kansas City schools, churches, and in low-income, underserved neighborhoods. To date, the Giving Grove has planted nearly 1,500 fruit and nut trees, which will provide over 180 tons of fresh food each year over the life of these trees. You can help by planting a tree. A donation of $50 pays for the tree, supplies, and community education needed for caring of the trees. Visit givinggrove.org to donate your tree. Unchain, unwind at Rico's for lunch. Enjoy classic, tasteful Italian cuisine in a unique hideaway at the southeast quarter of College in Quivira. Ask about our daily lunch specials or enjoy a wood-fired pizza with a specialty salad. Our delicious lunch menu is complemented by a global wine selection, including 25 varietals served by the glass. Full menu featured at ricoskc.com. Join us for lunch weekdays at Rico's. Wendy's Coffee House. My next guest is Lily Leonardi. In the Shadow of a Badge is the book she wrote in 2013. 9-11, the anniversary date is coming up. That day, Lily was working for the FBI, and she was one of the first responders at the Flight 93 crash site. She saw angels, angels on the scene. Her story and how that changed her life. Next time on Wendy's Coffee House, it's absolutely a fascinating story. If you miss it, catch it on the download podcast, and that's at wendyscoffeehouse.com. Do you smell it? Fall is in the air. The aroma of authentic festival fare in Weston. Mark your calendar, Tobacco Festival, Apple Fest, Weston Irish Festival. Each has its own unique flavor and fan club. Theme music, traditional foods and drinks make each festival a weekend-filled adventure. Everyone has a favorite. Visit westonmo.com or download the new Weston mobile app for more information and a complete calendar of all festival events. See you there. Kansas City's Severe Weather Radio Station, KCMO. You don't need a tinfoil hat for this, okay? This is the other version of looking for unidentified and cool objects. And my guest this morning, Rob Garcia, has done a little exploring. And he's got the technology, the equipment, the legit stuff. I don't know, the EMF reader, what are they? Hey, Rob, good morning. Hi, good morning. Are you awake? Yes, I am. <laughs> having my second cup of coffee. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, now... Since um, since you're local, I want people to be able to connect with you. What's the best? Um, let me see here. What have I got on? I've got something on too loud. Yeah, there we go. Maybe that's it. <laughs> My headphones. I'm getting feedback. Okay. Oh, your radio, Rob. Yeah, yeah. We're we're getting the stereo. I'm going. Whoa! Here's me, and there's me, and there's you. Really, I don't have any radio on. Oh, he has. There it is. It's the freaky ghosty thing. So this always <laughs> happens. This happens with mediums. This is happening with you. Okay. Well, my Mark is going to try and fix it back in engineering head, headquarters. In the meantime, oh, meantime, I do want to talk about your Elite Paranormal. What's the website so people can follow along at home? Yes, it's uh, www.eliteparanormalkc.com. All one word there for Elite Paranormal KC. Okay, and out of the out of the box here, we just want to mention you're going to have a couple of events coming up here in the in the near future. Yes, we'll uh, be doing our annual uh, public ghost investigations at the uh, John Warnell House in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, we'll be doing the Fridays this year, and I want to say those dates are October. Uh-oh. Did it lose the? Okay. Are can you we... hear me? Yeah, now we can. Okay. It'll be at the John Warnell House in Kansas City, Missouri, on October 21st and 28th okay. for my team. But there is another team that does the Saturday nights, and she's really good. And her That's a mom's thing. Mystic Moms, yeah. yeah. Her name's Denise, Denise Sia. She's, she's real fun, too. Uh, and then I think we'll do a combination-type thing on Halloween night after I take my kiddos up and down the block. Well, so. Of course. 
You don't want to miss out on the trick-or-treat candy. No, no. <laughs> they wouldn't allow it, so. You know how many adults stand back there and go, okay, no, those are not good for you. Uh-uh, no, those will just not do. And that's the stash that goes hidden in the closet at home. Yeah, <laughs> I rate it. Yeah, so it's gone. Yeah, yeah, well, you know. Let them have the, the stuff that's, that's good for them. <laughs> the toothbrush and toothpaste. I remember there was a trend that one year when, you know, it was like, hand out all this stuff. I'm like, what? This is not trick-or-treating. All right, so the ghosts. When, how long have you been doing this now? I'm coming up on around uh, around 11 or 12 years, I would say, how locally. Long, uh, we met we met a few years back. It was 2009 or 10. Yeah, it was something like that for, um, uh, what place was it? Was that Sigma Nu for we did I, that? I, yeah, it was Lawrence because they did an article and it was, it, was a, it was a lot of fun. And we did some others we weren't supposed to talk about. Yeah, yeah. There was another one we did close by there Shh. in Lawrence and... Uh, and then we did a, a couple other places as well. If I well, yeah, Chase County. Yeah. Well, and then there was the uh, the little antique store. That is still have okay. Let's let's go let's go on to that one real quick because I've driven by it several times. It's changed owners at least three or four times I know of since the woman that uh, we investigated was there. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. know any of the background? You know, I don't. I I kind of drive by it a lot because I live not too far from there, and it's on my path. Well, not anymore now that I work from home. It used to be on my way to work, but uh, the uh, the little buildings had, like, oh, a photography studio, and then it was something else. Nothing seems to stay very long in there. They did an antique shop once, and that was a problem the first time. I remember going in there. You know, this is we can talk about it since there's nobody uh -huh. not naming what it is. Um there, there was a sighting, and the, the adults didn't see it, but they, when they would go to the register to check out, they would say that children saw this other little boy standing at the register, and somebody said, um, you know, they would say, well, who's the little boy or whatever, and everybody knew, what, what little boy? The uh -huh. adults weren't seeing it. Can you give background on more of the activities? Well, I know that the other thing that they noticed a lot was there was the boy running up and down the stairs. Um, she had a lot of claims. There was, like, almost like a horror movie, you know, like a face presses through the wall type thing. Uh, she commented on at one time, and, you know, there was, she heard a lot of noise and a lot of disembodied voices, that sort of thing, coming from upstairs or downstairs. But the, what, the funny thing it was, it wasn't just her that would see it. It was sometimes the, the guests in the, in the antique store, and sometimes I think some of her, her workers, too, you yes. know, would, would hear this stuff. Yes. I remember she was saying that there were events happening with her daughter. And th the problem is, if you're doing these antique things, is that th a lot of these objects have an attachment. And people just don't buy into that until it happens to them. And yeah. she's bringing in, the, the, if you go in and you remove some of the stuff, energy from that place. And she also had some really s interesting stuff going on in the basement there. Um, the energy from the space, if you go in and kind of get it to calm down, because of an antique store, you get more in. You So you send that out, and then she brings home ten more items, and one of those or two of those have other little anomalies that are like, okay, cool, new place, new yeah. hangout. It's like a zoo. That's what it was. And, you know, you'd go in there, and the, the space itself was just so overwhelming because it was a very small house, and so there was so much stuff squeezed in there. You know, there's, I remember the audio. I go back and listen to it for my uh, speaking gig. I have some of those clips on there uh, when I do uh, conventions, and you hear those <laughs> all those clocks on the wall going click, 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 click <laughs> in every audio clip because there's like 15 uh, clocks on the wall in that room. So I mean, I don't know. Space was it was just strange when you walked in there, and you know, not to mention the the, the building's history uh, in that town as well. You know, since it was, I think, the town doctor's home at one time. Yeah, I think that's good to mention because the other thing happened out in Chase County was just, it had the same same um, thing factored into the equation, that it had been a house where people were treated. And way back when, when they weren't into, you know, we didn't have all these luxurious things like um, painkillers. Uh-huh. It was just, here, take a swig of whiskey and you're good to go. Oh, yeah, yeah right. Uh -huh. Where's my leg? Uh-huh, yeah. Well, he... Supposedly was the downstairs, you know, there was those stone rooms, and I'm talking pretty archaic-looking rooms. They were, there was supposedly his operating rooms there in Lenexa, so 
I mean, this was when when, when exit was just a little train stop, you know. What I want to know is, uh, you've done your research, have you had any other homes in that area report to you, or have you noticed? Because usually they say when there's something that's this intense, this kind of activity, there might be others in that area who have the same um, goings on. You know, I haven't. Um, and that was something I was had touched on, kind of had come up before. Is Right there, I mean, it's right in Lenexa, but the thing is, Johnson County... I don't get a lot of calls in Johnson County, Kansas, for paranormal activity from people in their homes, for oh. private residences. It's something geographic about it. I don't, I don't uh, know why. I think it's the stigma. Yeah, I think so, too. And I dealt with a woman who had, and she was a teacher, and I can say it, um, it was basically 79th Street. Okay? Uh-huh. And uh, right there off Quivira. And we'll put it between Quivira and, and West. Anyway, uh, the the way the layout of that area was was like in a ravine, and mm-hmm. so what she was having, she would hear flute music from the living room at night, and she had a handprint on the mirror in the bathroom. I went in, and every wall in her bedroom had mirrors. It's like wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Usually, that's not a good idea. Uh-huh. Okay, so it tells you a, bit, a little bit about the personality and it tells you a little bit about what's going on and why it might amplify or mag you know any any kind of occurrence right there is going to be um elevated but she had several things and when i went in um the there was a room that i the daughters were were seeing a little girl go in and play in one of the closets with her youngest daughter and she would go in and play with this little girl and then there was the other thing where when we went into the garage, I asked her if there was something that happened there. And sure enough, it, it, something extraordinary and intense had happened to her. Mm-hmm. And once she dealt with that, she things calmed down a little bit, but she did move. And um, she, she, at that point, was saying the house was haunted so that if anybody was interested. But it, it's been a while, so I don't want to go there. It's just that, that kind of thing. Um, here she is. She's a teacher. She's got a normal life. Mm-hmm. And then she goes home at night to that kind of stuff. And then how do you reconcile that? And how do you talk about it? Because your credibility then comes into question. And, and I have no problem talking about it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so, you know. I've gotten the same way. You know, I, I do have a professional career outside of paranormal. So, you know, I've always kind of tried to balance, you know, that as far as, you know, being a paranormal investigator. You know, some people think, oh, you're off your rocker or but I, you know, I kind of always take a very practical approach to doing these investigations because a lot of it is investigative work, especially with private residences. You have to really, there's so many hats you have to wear when you do it. That you have to be a, you know, you kind of have to feel the people out, interview them, figure out, you know, where they're coming from and what's their, some people have a motivation for calling you, so you have to kind of figure that out. Yeah, if they're trying to set you up and go, okay, we know they can't really do this, so let's freak them out. It's either that or they're trying to be on television. That's another thing that you run into. I mean, that's, I'm not saying that's everybody. There's yeah. a lot of legit cases that I do, but there's some that I, you know, I have to really feel them out, and I've kind of learned over the years the process of doing that. So just making sure that I'm not walking into a bad situation or bringing any of my folks into a bad situation. Okay, what I want to do, just um, think about the most extraordinary case you've had so far. And we're going to talk about the EVP stuff that you do, too. Okay. But the most extraordinary case, because we have to take a break. But if you're listening, you can catch the download here, wendyscoffeehouse.com. Elite Paranormal, Kansas City-based, and Ghostbusting is their forte. Next on Wendy's Coffee House. <laughs> Wendy's Coffee House on Talk Radio KCMO, continuing to build the archive library. Got several shows in there now. One of them is Connecting with Coincidence, Dr. Bernard Beitman. He talks about how coincidences may have a lot more in common than we realize, and we might be able to actually connect those a little bit better. The word telepathy factors into the equation. Find out more with Dr. Bernard Beitman on Wendy's Coffee House. Check it out in the archives at wendyscoffeehouse.com. Unchained. 
unwind at Rico's for lunch. Enjoy classic, tasteful Italian cuisine in a unique hideaway at the southeast corner of College in Quivira. Ask about our daily lunch specials or enjoy a wood-fired pizza with a specialty salad. Our delicious lunch menu is complemented by a global wine selection, including 25 varietals served by the glass. Full menu featured at ricoskc.com. Join us for lunch weekdays at Rico's. CBS News updates. The unofficial end of summer promises to end wet and wild for millions along the East Coast. It's all about Hermine, which could strengthen into a hurricane again. Right now, it's west of Cape Hatteras. We think there's some chance that Hermine is going to intensify, but not as a typical tropical cyclone would. It could have tropical cyclone characteristics. It may have characteristics of, say, like a nor'easter. Forecaster Todd Kimberlane. The storm has left a path of destruction in Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas. Officials in Oak Island, North Carolina, warning. Oh, I wouldn't drive through that. That's going to get up in his car and, and, and rust stuff out. Plus, you don't know what's in that water. Crews now working to restore power in Tallahassee, Florida, where an estimated 80% of utility customers lost power. We're going around just trying to get as many people on as we possibly can and uh, just start eliminating it down to smaller outages. And uh, everybody be patient, but we're going at it hard as we can. Wayne Young of Tampa Utilities, CBS News Update. I'm Gary Nunn. KCMO weather from KCTV5. Well, it's going to be a beautiful weekend forecast. Saturday starting off in the 50s. Sunshine with a few fair weather clouds. Highs into the upper 70s. 84 on Sunday and sunshine Monday with a high near 90. I'm KCTV5 Chief Meteorologist Chris Suchan. Do you smell it? Ball is in the air. The aroma of authentic festival fare in Weston. Mark your calendar. Tobacco Festival, Apple Fest, Weston Irish Festival. Each has its own unique flavor and fan club. Theme music, traditional foods and drinks make each festival a weekend-filled adventure. Everyone has a favorite. Visit westonmo.com or download the new Weston mobile app for more information and a complete calendar of all festival events. See you there. When a nightlight speaks and only you can understand it, do you listen? Or pretend that your imagination is merely playing tricks? Talking to nightlights is a revitalizing spiritual guide that follows a woman's inspirational journey to learn the power that can be harnessed by losing fear and suspending disbelief. Available now on Kindle and paperback at Amazon.com. Stop being drained by energy vampires. A full energy audit from Eric's Energy will expose the pesky problems plaguing your home. Weatherization, insulation, and other energy-saving technologies installed by experienced, reliable technicians will drive a stake through the heart of what's tormenting you. Call 816-537-5100 or visit us at ericsenergy.com. E-R-I-C-S-E-N-E-R-G-Y.com. ericsenergy.com. Garlic optional. Give a gift that helps feed a city. The Giving Grove helps communities grow, harvest, and share healthy food by planting fruit trees, nuts, and berries at local Kansas City schools, churches, and in low-income underserved neighborhoods. To date, the Giving Grove has planted nearly 1,500 fruit and nut trees, which will provide over 180 tons of fresh food each year over the life of these trees. You can help by planting a tree. A donation of $50 pays for the tree, supplies, and community education needed for caring of the trees. Visit givinggrove.org to donate your tree. Listen up, Kansas City. Dave Ramsey here. I'm excited to announce that for the first time ever, the Smart Money Tour featuring New York Times number one best-selling author Rachel Cruz and me. We're headed back. That's right. We're going to be in Kansas City on October 20th. If you're tired of living paycheck to paycheck and you're wondering what you're going to do when retirement comes around, well, you can find the answers at this one-night event. It's time to live more and worry less. Just visit DaveRamsey.com and reserve your Smart Money seats today. Traffic and weather together first on the fours in Kansas City's most stimulating talk all day. KCMO Kansas City. KCMO keeps you updated. We've got you covered when you need it most. News, weather, and traffic on the fours on Kansas City's most stimulating talk. KCMO. What? What? No, not here. Not here. You know what? Wendy's Coffee House. Um, during the break, my producer says, 
I have no idea what happened. No, it shouldn't have happened. Everything's okay. Nothing was wrong with the electronics. So there you go, Rob. Can you come on down and visit us? <laughs> yeah. Th- it's funny how that happens. That's the thing. They, they do affect electronics. And when you try to tell people that, and then, of course, you have a, 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 you know, an engineer or somebody who's used to that going, no, no, they don't. No. But and then they go, oh, yeah, well, they do. Uh, they, they very much do. And that, when you're working with your equipment, because I've been with you when you've set this stuff up, it's super sensitive. And how do you, and you, you mean, you had an improvement. You, you like, when you first started, you were getting used to the equipment. And then certain scenarios, certain situations, you could get better results. Is, is that continuing? Oh, yeah, you know, the equipment's improved. Um, that's a lot of it, too, is, you know, when we started out, you know, EMF electronic, or, uh, you know, what they you want to say, EMF meters, which, you know, pick up the uh, electromagnetic frequencies, they basically only told you a reading or with a little flashy light. And, well, that's neat. You, they don't really tell you a whole lot that, you know, you know you got somebody or you, that you're communicating with someone and it's not the electricity in the wall. Well, now I have meters that tell me, well, this is a signal from the wall, and it's not of the paranormal nature, or you know, or if it's unexplained, it's in another frequency of EMF, because there are other frequencies that we can narrow down to and figure out, you know, this is not the AC electricity coming out of the wall or from the microwave or from Wi-Fi. something like that. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, the new tower down the road. Or someone's cell phone or something like that, because it's the stuff that interferes with what we're trying to do. Okay. Oh, I, and Elite Paranormal, my guest today, Rob Garcia, local. You want to contact him and go on a, a ghost watch, you can do that. But I wanted to focus back on what the most extraordinary event in your experience that you've encountered so far. I think one of the most extraordinary events I've encountered would probably be... Uh, I think, you know, I do work with another gentleman out in California. His name's Harvey. He's, he's a psychic medium. He's a remote viewer. He has the ability to see across the country only by knowing the address of the place I'm at. And being able to participate in my investigations as well as help me kind of narrow things down. And one of the things that he did do was he, I had a public investigation at the Alexander Major's house, which is also here in Kansas City, and he's able to tell one of my investigators to go to this particular location. Now, he's not there. He's never been there. And take pictures of a stairwell, and he doesn't know why she has to go there, but she just does. So she goes, she starts taking these pictures, and she's in the pitch darkness, and this, she cap, lo and behold, she captures this shadow going up the stairs, and we caught it in three photographs. And that actually was featured on my ghost story years ago when we were on that television show yeah i saw that i saw those pictures yes and that was pretty extraordinary not that she captured the the photos was that he was able to point her to go there absolutely and, but he didn't know why he just knew that she needed to go there and do this that was probably one of the most intriguing events that i've i've seen happen as far as as doing this remember when we did the house in lawrence was it the the, the sigma new yes yeah uh, is that the one that has the up, upper deck that you can look around? Yeah, that was the house itself, you know. What people don't know is that was a very opulent house at one time for Governor Stubbs and his wife Stella, who lived there. That wasn't the governor's mansion. That was their private residence there in Lawrence. And it had that, they had a dam- they had like a ballroom on the top floor at one time. That's what it was. So the background on that, though, I mean, this is a big place, a big, big, plenty of rooms, all the whole nine yards. When mm-hmm. we were going through there, I had this um, sense to go up to the top, and I am afraid of heights, so it's not something I would normally just be, you know, all gung-ho to do, but go up to the top and take pictures. And I have those pictures, and at one point, you know, there's going to be a sun anomaly because you're taking pictures into the setting sun, but it was just this prompt to go up and do that. And there's this wonderful little green... Um, it's it's a little like a, a mist, and that is the anomaly in the photo. Now, there's this big, huge, round, blue disc that's absolutely incredible. Mm-hmm. I love that. But the little green mist is more, to me, of a, of a curiosity in that photo because I can possibly explain this beautiful blue orb, but the mist is this, the, like, oh, what is that? And usually that's ectoplasm. Yeah. 
And, you know, that place was very interesting. There, It was like an onion because there were so many different layers to it and the story behind it and the folklore and trying to prove or disprove that folklore of what was going on inside of that place because, you know, now it's a fraternity, so it's no longer as opulent as it used to be, so it's all subdivided in those little rooms for the boys. But the what was going on there didn't know that any you know, I don't think they really oh, cared no. about the modern trappings. Oh, no, it no. was all about what the house looked like to them in their time. Well, in the, in the basement, there was a pool, I think a pool table. Anyway, there was kind of a rec room in the basement. I remember every time I went down there, it would undo my necklace. It's uh -huh. like, you jokers, <laughs> quit. But that was a way, and, then, and that's the, the kind of things that you experience when you go into these places. It's more a way of saying, hi, gotcha, are you paying attention? Yeah, and you know, and there was the whole folklore of the girl of Virginia who was, you know, supposedly hung by... Stella. Stella. Well, yeah, and they didn't say they didn't know that that so she was just hung. But you know, and I always kind of found that to be a story of folklore. I was like, okay, so you're telling me this older woman forcibly hung a strong 19 year old girl or whatever she was supposed to be against her will, which you know was I kind of thought silly. But it's a good soap opera. It's a good soap opera. Yeah, I don't know that I buy into that either. I just there are plenty of things there that make it a very unusual space to be especially mm -hmm. when you're in college and you've got things playing with you when you're trying to do your homework yeah <laughs> and get a good night's sleep and i did go back and do and show the house the folks that manage the house what i did capture and i did put on a presentation for some of the boys of that time and i don't know how they took that that well <laughs> uh but uh the you know i felt i i had an obligation to share with them what you know because we did investigate it twice so I did have, feel like I had an obligation to share with them what we did find. And I know you keyed in on a lot of events there when we were there together. So, you know. Well, it's just very active. Mm -hmm. It's very active. And then trying to go, draw conclusions, you know, we have to go back with what's going on in, in the whole thing. You, you bring all these kids or all these other people. There was a worker there who was um, had a whole lot of experiences. And he wasn't, he's like, holy cow. I can't, I can't focus. I remember one thing he was, he was said he was putting some, um, trying to hang some stuff on the walls, and he had the screws back on the table behind him, mm -hmm. and he heard this, you know, it kind of echoed because the room is empty. He heard one drop on the floor, and he sat there, and you know, for 15, 20 minutes trying to figure out how one could be in the middle of the table and then drop on the floor. He tried to figure, well, did it have a slant? Was there a, bre you know, he was baffled by some of the things, and uh, I think that was one of the most compelling parts of that was when he was telling you, you know, mm -hmm. these things are happening. I have no explanation for what they are. The the best thing that happened was when we did return the second time, you know, I do a lot of what is called instrumental transcommunication, and that's a whole other genre of paranormal investigation, but it's basically using a machine to try and communicate with spirits. And um, I did have direct communication doing that with Stella, while we were upstairs on in the area she likes to hang out in, yeah, and uh, and I kind of asked her things like, you know, are you stuck? And she said, no. She goes, I can leave. It was one, that was her response. Mm -hmm. But I felt like this was her happy spot, and she kind of just remains there and kind of comes and goes at will. That's kind of my sense of it. I pictured a woman with a cat seated on a porch or in a you know in a room like that who was quite comfortable and had no intention of ever vacating <laughs> yeah and you know and i think that the activity of the boys and all that that was in helpful her, in her yeah in her realm that was irregardless she didn't it's energy yeah they, it's energy they didn't really register even in her thought process no no it's just like a, a little bubble there that's oh it feels you know a nice buzz okay when we come back um you often take people on your tours and your events how many people and what does it what do we you know what how does that work? How do you pick people or they, they just show up? We're going to have to take a break, but I wanted to come back and get into the possibility of people checking you out and going with you on some of these, like the one that's coming up here at the um, Major's house. All right? Okay. Okay. And we're talking with Rob Garcia, Elite Paranormal here in Kansas City on Talk Radio KCMO. Lights flickering, feeling an occasional draft, afraid to go to the basement because it smells too ghastly. 
Let Eric's Energy do a whole house energy assessment to locate the energy draining skeletons in your closet. Install quality conventional solar, geothermal, or other energy saving technologies for a happy, comfortable home. Call 816-537-5100 or visit us at ericsenergy.com. E-R-I-C-S-E-N-E-R-G-Y dot com. That's ericsenergy.com. Do you smell it? Fall is in the air. The aroma of authentic festival fare in Weston. Mark your calendar, Tobacco Festival, Apple Fest, Weston Irish Festival. Each has its own unique flavor and fan club. Theme music, traditional foods and drinks make each festival a weekend-filled adventure. Everyone has a favorite. Visit westonmo.com or download the new Weston mobile app for more information and a complete calendar of all festival events. See you there. Wendy's Coffee House on Talk Radio KCMO, continuing to build the archive library. Let's go. Got several shows in there now. One of them is Connecting with Coincidence, Dr. Bernard Weitman. He talks about how coincidences may have a lot more in common than we realize, and we might be able to actually connect those a little bit better. The word telepathy factors into the equation. Find out more with Dr. Bernard Weitman on Wendy's Coffee House. Check it out in the archives at wendyscoffeehouse.com. At New Horizon Ranch, we believe that every child is capable of greatness. Over the last 10 years, unique programs, dedicated volunteers, and horse partners have helped children and adults of all ages improve physical strength, relational, and cognitive skills. Sometimes it's reading to our miniature horses, and sometimes it's riding. But it's always therapeutic and educational. Learn more about what we do and how you can get involved at NewHorizonRanch.org. Give a gift that helps feed a city. The Giving Grove helps communities grow, harvest, and share healthy food by planting fruit trees, nuts, and berries at local Kansas City schools, churches, and in low-income, underserved neighborhoods. To date, the Giving Grove has planted nearly 1,500 fruit and nut trees, which will provide over 180 tons of fresh food each year over the life of these trees. You can help by planting a tree. A donation of $50 pays for the tree, supplies, and community education needed for caring of the trees. Visit givinggrove.org to donate your tree. Wendy's Coffee House. My next guest is Lily Leonardi in The Shadow of Badge is the book she wrote in 2013. 9-11, the anniversary date is coming up. That day, Lily was working for the FBI and she was one of the first responders at the Flight 93 crash site. She saw angels, angels on the scene. Her story and how that changed her life. Next time on Wendy's Coffee House, it's absolutely a fascinating story. If you miss it, catch it on the download podcast and that's at wendyscoffeehouse.com. Hey guys, it's Carson with a special announcement. All next week on the Carson in the Morning Show at 7, 10 a.m., we have Chiefs Chargers tickets for you. September the 11th, we're going to put you in the stands as we cheer on our Chiefs as they start an epic 2016 season at Arrowhead. You want to get in? You've got to be nowhere on your dial but my show at 7, 10. All next week on AM 7, 10 and 1037 FM KCMO. Listen up, Kansas City. Dave Ramsey here. I'm excited to announce that for the first time ever, the Smart Money Tour featuring New York Times number one best-selling author Rachel Cruz and me. We're headed back. That's right. We're going to be in Kansas City on October 20th. If you're tired of living paycheck to paycheck and you're wondering what you're going to do when retirement comes around, well, you can find the answers at this one-night event. It's time to live more and worry less. Just visit DaveRamsey.com and reserve your smart money seats today. Know the weather before it hits. From KCTV5, Kansas City's weather station. News, weather, and traffic on the board. 103.7 FM and AM 710. KCMO. Hey, it's Mike Ferguson from the Midday Show. On Friday's program, we've got our money man, Chris Butler, going to help you keep your money in your pocket. Also, Mike's views on the news. You never want to miss that. Noon to one right here on KCMO, Kansas City's most stimulating talk. KCMO keeps you updated. FM 103.7 and AM 710. It's outrageous. Shame on you. KCMO, Kansas City's most stimulating talk. Wendy's Coffee House on Talk Radio KCMO. My guest today, Rob Garcia of Elite Paranormal. Okay, so first, before we get anybody in trouble by going with you to one of these spooky things, we want to 
ask you, have you ever been frightened by anything? I mean, super frightened by anything that you investigated? I think the, and I don't know if it was anything I investigated, but probably the most frightened I've been, I ever been was when I had, um, I was going to go to this location, and I had started having these really bad nightmares before I went there, and they were so graphic that, that really frightened me. It was like, was I, you know, the universe saying, hey, you better not go to this place and at that time. And um, that was probably the most frightening thing because, you know, doing this work, the, the biggest fear you have is, you know, something going to come home with me and start causing trouble. So that... Um, and that can happen. Yes, it can. So you have to really be protective of yourself doing this. So... Uh, did that resolve itself when the nightmares, did you go? When I backed out of doing it, they went away. <laughs> when you backed out, okay, yeah. See, that's the deal. When, you, when we get that kind of information says, I'm in over my head, this isn't a place for me to go. There's, that, that's, and some people buy houses and they have this, this sinking feeling and they're still, well, we'll clean it up when we get there. No, it's not something you can clean. It's a whole different issue. So pay attention to your gut. Well, I just wanted to mention that first before people volunteer to go along on these ghost things because... There's, there are things that we don't have explanations for, and they exist. And that's why, you know, that's why I do this type of work is there aren't explanations for everything, but I do try to give, because I'm not a home clearer. I don't claim that I can make your spirits leave your house if they're there. Uh, I just give you evidence and documentation that something is going on in your house that I was able to capture that you couldn't capture without, you know, doing some of the equipment that I do and giving you some of the explanations why. Mm -hmm. What's happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was one house you guys went to, and I think the basement, there were all sorts of... These were almost like a shrine to horror films, and they were wondering why they had activity. Yeah, I remember that house. And, you know, they had they had some activity going on, and we did capture a lot of electronic voice phenomena there. Um, but but like you, you, know, you were saying, there's a shrine, there's... They were really into horror films. And I'm not saying everyone that's into horror films is going to create that situation. They were just happened to be in the right place to create that situation with their little shrine and the things they were into. And I find that's often the case with some of these cases. Um, you know, sometimes these investigations, when you do private residence especially, they're just, they're just um, family-type things going on. Yeah. I'm, I'm talking like good things. And then sometimes you have people that live kind of dark lives, and they kind of have dark hauntings when they do have them. So I find that to be very much a pattern. Some of the darkest cases I had, the people that lived there were very dysfunctional people. So they kind of go hand in hand. And sometimes it's actually the ghost saying, hey, clean up your act. Hey, don't do this. No, been there, done that. It's not going to end well. <laughs> yeah. Every situation's different. You know, you, you just never know. Okay, so now that we've prefaced it with do your protection, remember this isn't really a game, it may be fun, and it might be, you know, you may be taking it lighthearted, but there, there are some parameters. So when people go with you on a ghost hunt, what do you suggest, and what's the next opportunity? Well, I always tell people, you know, if you're going to engage in doing this, try to use your religion, your personal religion first to, try to keep your protection up, you know. Because I believe this is all energy, uh, and I've felt that over the years as I've grown in this field. And you can get rid of that energy by doing certain routines. Um, you know, and I kind of coach people through those different routines of how I do it, and then let them, you know, kind of explore that side of the paranormal, which is the less technical side of the paranormal, mm -hmm. or, or or spirituality, as you would say. And they would, so I kind of coach them through that on these investigations that I do. And, you know, some people are open to that. Some are, like, rolling their eyes at you. So you just never know. Um, Don't come back. Yeah. <laughs> the wide-eyed look then going, holy cow. Because when I started out, I was about as metaphysical as a stone. So, I mean, it's just, you know, after working so many years of this, you kind of... Develop they, armor. Yeah, you do. And then you kind of have things happen to you and go, oh, well, maybe there is something to this. So, uh, and yes, the I do do public investigations in October every year. That's pretty much the only time I do them these days is, uh, is, around, is around the Halloween time because that's when they become popular. 
<laughs> and uh, yeah. I always do them for the John Warnell House, which is in Kansas City, Missouri. It's actually the Warnell Majors Foundation. They run this house and the Alexander Majors House. I sometimes do them at the Majors House, but they like to feature the the Warnell House much more because it's it's you know it's very it's very, much more done up inside as as its time frame. Well, is it more haunted or more, I mean, what's the difference? I think they're both haunted, but uh, I think it's a different kind of haunt. Um, the Warnell House to me is very much uh, historical figures and Civil War soldiers and family going back generations of the Warnells because they are the family that lived there the whole time that mm-hmm. it's been occupied. So I think it's a very generational haunt. Um, and, I, you know, it's, and I think they kind of come and go as, as they will yeah. in that place. Yeah. Um, I don't think they're there all the time, which is why sometimes, you know, I've investigated it probably close to 30 times now. And sometimes you'll have a lot of activity there, and sometimes it'll be very quiet. Nothing much will happen. But, you'll, you know, it, that doesn't always mean you won't capture things in your recording equipment. Mm-hmm. You will, but that doesn't mean they're going to come out and interact with you. Okay, and then the other thing, too, do you have other people who are frequent flyers on your ghost tour program? I do have some people that come back year-round. Um, you know, it just, you just never know because there's only like 14 slots for investigation. So you have to kind of jump early if you want to go on these. They uh, they fill up fast every year. Okay, and this is the, the ghost tours. Is it October 21st, the first? Yeah, I'll be doing the two Fridays this year at the, uh, at the John Warnell House. So I do the Fridays, and Denise and the Mystic Moms will do the Saturdays. Since I have seventh grade football on Saturdays. So. I know. We were working around this, around your football schedule and your work schedule. So wait, wait, wait. Let me check. I'm in the Ukraine, but I'll be back, and I'll check my calendar. <laughs> yeah, my wife is from Ukraine, so we're taking our first visit this summer in three years. So it was you know, a lot of fun. It was Okay. Well, all right. And did you have any ghost experiences over there? I didn't. Um, you know, you go over there, and that doesn't really come up among their culture. Maybe they just have other things to worry about. But, yeah. But, you know, you don't really hear about a lot of paranormal type stuff. But I'm sure it goes on with history that old. Yeah, well, if you were there a little longer and you had a chance to kind of, you know, go explore and, and ask the right questions. I, I mean, there are people I've talked to who talk to UFO people who've had experiences, and they, they only want to talk to certain people, all right? So you'll get your reputation and then go back over there. <laughs> We got to get out of here. I really appreciate you getting up early for this. It's Rob Garcia. Um, Tell people how to connect again. Yes, it's www.eliteparanormalkc.com. And we're also on Facebook. And if you want to go on the public investigations, go out to the Warnell Majors website and book the investigations through them. Okay. Because they are the ones who sell the tickets. All right. And remember, put your ghost armor on. Yes, yeah, definitely. Do that. All right. Thank you. Thanks for talking with us. You're welcome. If you missed the show, get it on the podcast, wendyscoffeehouse.com. Spooky, spooky, spooky. Well, not really. This is this is the safe stuff, okay? You're just vicariously getting spooked. Next time, stay curious and keep it on wendyscoffeehouse.com. See ya. Hey, hey, hey.